All right, so let's talk about motion direct commands and why you would use motion direct commands. Actually, how do you use motion direct commands, right? So let's answer all those questions in this very in this short video. So one implementation, and I'll show you. Now, motion axis direct commands, motion direct commands are done by going to the actual servo that you want to control. In this case, we're going to go to our motion group, our motion groups right here, and this is our servo. Okay, and this is in Studio 5000 version 32. This uh, this servo happens to be a Kinetic 6000, but you can do this again on all the series of Kinetics that you know exist inside of Rockwell Automation. So when it comes down to it, it could be a 5700 or it could be a 5500. In this case, it's just a, uh, a Kinetic 6000. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to Motion Direct Commands, and I want to show you a couple things you can do. Now it's a very powerful tool. Now there is, just so you do, we're all clear, there is no PLC code behind any of this. Uh, so there's nothing else I can do besides a motion group command. Now I want to talk about a couple of reasons why you would actually use motion direct commands. Okay. Well, if you're troubleshooting a servo, let's just say for instance, the servo faulted out, it has a, a fault, you troubleshoot shoot the fault, and it's, instead you led to the, the ability, you said, okay, well maybe it's the motor. Maybe the motor's uh, you know, messed up, uh, the servo motor itself, right? And you wanna test it, right? So, the because it, it could be a mechanical limitation, like something attached to the motor that is mechanically hitting something and torquing out, or maybe it's, uh, you know, it the velocity's too much and it's given a little bit of a, you know, a, um, a feedback and it's actually tripping out something when you're stopping it too quickly it could be a mechanical limitation but in that case it's not exactly a it's, it's not a motor issue right so if you change the motor you're going to end up in the same problem because it's, again it's a mechanical limitation or it's something torquing it out or it's something that's giving a an excess feedback for, you know that's actually giving a, a problem with let's just say for instance uh, you know like overpower or something like that so Real quick, you have the ability to do this, like uh, you know, motion or MSO, which is turning on, MSF, which is turning it off. You have the ability to shut down the axis, reset the axis, uh, come over here, motion uh, direct drive on, which I highly don't, I recommend don't use that um, unless you know what you're doing as far as that goes. Um, meaning you don't, you know what your voltage is and everything you want to actually turn on. I my favorite ones are the motion axis on and the motion axis when I'm troubleshooting right we're talking about this in the implementation of troubleshooting um, the motion axis fault reset and then coming in here doing controls as far as the motion move you have your motion stop which is your default that's like something you you need to know where that's at you have your motion home you have your motion jog you have motion M A M which is move to position um, then you have you can you can mag or you can uh, gear it to another another gear you can dynamically change it and you can redefine the position so there's two things in here you can actually redefine the position which is home and the MRP now I want to talk to you real quick so if I, if I come in here and I turn the servo on let me just say let me just right now if I'm in this atmosphere before you run it you have to be able to turn it on right so you first in the natural order of operation on servos you turn the servo drive on which closes the loop and once you close the loop then you have the ability to do a jog or MAM and move the motor but first you have to cut it on so let's just talk about if we cut it on right here you can see the servo drive is in axis state it's on it's in servo control now let's just say that didn't happen what if you got a fault okay what if you had an error what if all it did was give you an error and you had no clue what to do so let's quickly turn turn this off so we get the same same thing. So I did an uh, MS, uh, MSF right there. So it, let me open up the servo properties and talk about this real quick. So in the in the drive properties, in the drive and motor, if you have this little box check that says drive enable uh, input checking. Okay, this right here. And you can check that, right? If that's checked, let me show you what that does then I'm going to come over here and go to motion direct commands and then it's going to error out on me now why did it error out it's a good question because on my servo I don't have any kind of uh, inputs that I'm going to the input 
there's uh, three sections on the servo servo drive, the, the Kinetic 6000. I don't have any inputs coming in there monitoring the status of the safety, monitoring the status of an input that I want to control before, let's just say you have some inputs, a series of, of controls that you want to have happen before you send the input to enable the servo. This is what they call enabling, right? So this would be a hardwire enable. So if you're using a hardwire enable, that box is going to be checked. I'm not, rec I'm not saying uncheck that box to be able to do this task. You just need to be aware that something else in your system, a wire in your system or a control in your system is hardwired to this servo and not allowing you to do so. But if you're the person that's implementing it in the very start, you're bench testing, you just wanna, you just wanna bench test it. Make sure that that specific box is not checked unless you are using that box. This is an, effectively the drive enabled, okay? So just keep that in mind. If that box is checked, you can't do it. Or if that box is checked and your input is high, your input is good, then you can do that. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So let's come over here. Let's turn our servo on. And remember, <clears throat> in my scenario, I do not have any type of inputs, right? I have no drive enable inputs. So when it comes down to it, I'm able to turn it on just like I have. Now let's come over here to a jog and you can change this to forward or reverse. In this atmosphere, if you wanted to test it, you could just put in a very small number and see if the drive moved. In my case, my drive is currently running right now. Um, if you want to see that, we can go to the drive tags, uh, which is the uh, tag mo access tag monitor. Come over here and we'll click right here. And you can see that the velocity is there, right? I have my velocity. And let's come over here and, and get this where it is. There we go. Let's see if we can't get that to a better point. This is the watch. Come over here. We're going to get actual position. All right. So actual position of the servo is actually moving. You can see that right there. Now, if I were to come over here and do the motion axis stop, stop right here. You can see that it does stop. The servo does stop right here. All right, so let's do a um, home for that matter. Let's home the servo. All right, so now it's at zero. Now let's do an MAM. Now the, the speed, the position I wanna go to, let's just say I wanna go to a position of 100. And the speed I wanna go, again, based upon your control method, your speed is based upon your attributes of how your attributes of your servo is set up. But in my case, it's very minimal, and I just have a wheel turning on my bench, so it's not, not a big deal. So I'm going to put a speed of, let's just put a speed of 10, um, and then let's execute. Now, what's going to happen is here, the servo is going to run to the position of 100. It's currently at zero. You can see the actual, actual drive, the servo itself, the servo motor itself is at zero. I'm going to get it to run to 100. Okay, so now it's running. It's running up. You can see it's running, and as soon as it gets to 100, it's going to stop. Now, this is a, a motion axis move. You see that? It got to right here, 999.999, which again, equivalents to 100. So, that's one way to do things. Now, the next way is, again, the jog. You can do forward, reverse. If we want to do a reverse, let's just put in five for that matter. We can jog it to a reverse, jog it backwards. You can see it jogging. now. It's not going to stop in the jog. What I do in the in the in any kind of environment, if I want to stop the servo, I need to come into it and establish and execute a MAS, which is a motion axis stop. You see the drive is stopped right now. Okay. What if I want to re re redefine the position? I can redefine the position if I want to say, okay, well this is actually a position of 50. Uh, I want to come in here, redefine it, and it goes to a position of 50. Let's just say I want to. Now, I always recommend if you're homing it to always, if you're at zero, you always go to home and you home it there. Now, again, your home could be based upon your practice, your, your properties over here. Your home could be something else. It, could, it doesn't have to be zero. Um, let's just say your home, your home could be set at 50 or your home could be set at whatever the case may be. It may be home to a switch. Um, in that case, again, this is just some tools you can use to help troubleshoot you. 
But again, if the servo moves and you know you don't have any kind of limitations, say you unhook, you uncoupled the servo from the from the mechanical limitations, and you come over here and you say, okay, well first I'm going to come over here. I'm going to always issue us an off. I'm going to issue a, a reset. I'm going to come over here and issue a motion axis on, and then I'm going to control it. Then okay, well it's uncoupled, so I want to see if it runs. If it runs, then there's nothing wrong with the motor. Okay, so now it's running. Okay, well, okay, we need to troubleshoot the mechanical limitations of the, the, the system. Or we need to come in and, and look at what are some other things that are happening, right? Do we have any kind of, uh, you know, like dirty, clean or dirty power issues or something like that, right? Uh, just keep that in mind. If it does run right here, 90% of the time it's not the motor. Uh, there is sometimes that it still could be the motor. The the bearing in the very front of the motor, sometimes the little retainer ring actually, you know, actually, like say for instance, I don't know how this happens, but the, a lot of environments get a lot of rust in that environment. And then that as soon as that front bearing gets a little rust, you'll have that happen. You'll have a start getting torque faults, position faults, and stuff of that nature. And then you can come over here and motion axis test it like this, and then it will still run but the torque is going to be high. So you could have that happen. In that case, it is a sealed motor. So in that case, you can spray some little silicone in there to get it a temporary run. And if that frees it up, it works. Now, I don't recommend spraying um, anything other than like silicone or some like really, really uh, dry lubricant inside of that bearing because when it comes out, comes down to it, it's still electronics. But 90% are servo motors or just keep in mind servo motors are a permanent magnet motor so it's completely sealed okay it's not a regular motor and in in a regular AC motor do not spray anything in there okay just on a servo we're talking about servo motors okay that's it but I just want to give you a couple little tips and tricks and and how to do motion access to, uh, direct commands where to get those some things you need to look out for and hopefully you found this video helpful with all that said we'll see you guys on the next one